This is only the second drawing of a rose I've done and I wasn't particularly happy with the first one but I thought I'd give it a go using a 0.2 millimeter pen and I also use a 0.1 millimeter pen in the second half. But for now, I'm wanting to outline these petals and you can see me basically taking each, each petal, starting with the upper part that bends or curls in some way in most cases. And what I'm trying to do is to get their lengths in proportion with each other. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to draw this a bit larger, not actual size because I, I wanted the rose to be a bit larger for the hatching stage. And so I'm trying to do these, these upper uh, ends of the, of the rose and get the angles as correct as I could and create the shapes that we see between, between those edges and keep them in proportion and keep the overall shape of the rose happening that's a, that's a particularly important thing with a rose where there's an approximate symmetry to it now i do actually leave one petal out which i didn't discover until so that one i've just done there there's another petal parallel not far off and i didn't put that one in i didn't realize it till quite late in the hatching stage of the drawing I'm trying to keep all my lines fairly light and loose. I'm thinking I can emphasize some later. If that might add a little more interest visually to the scene. And I'm still not 100% sure that I'm going to add hatching or not at this point. In my experimenting with marks, I wasn't particularly impressed with the effect of hatching, but maybe I just needed to take more time and but I, I quite like this stage I quite like this just drawing of the rose and I really wasn't sure whether to leave it like this <clears throat> but really I thought okay I may as well persevere with the hatching because then I can find out what it's like I can get a sense of is it worth doing and anyone else who sees the video can form an opinion too on the possible worth of it and now we have the leaves. And if you're finding this interesting, please hit the like button for me and help me out. So now the leaves and trying to understand the shape and how they, they curve. It's not 100% clear to me in the photo. I guess I could have gone back to the other room and looked at the rose, but. So basically just trying to make these leaves look credible, but I am sticking pretty much to the photo as much as I can. So this is pretty much it. No, there's another leaf down there. What do you think? Should I have left it at this stage or continuing with the hatching that you'll watch me do now? Did that improve it or not? I'd be interested to hear in your comments whether you prefer this line stage or this hatching stage starting now. So now I've switched to the 0.1 millimeter pen and not just is it a 0.1, but it's a pretty dried out 0.1. So it's a particularly thin and even patchy line. And this is where it's a bit tricky at the start because I'm not 100% sure of just what am I going to hatch, just some of the innermost areas, or am I going to try and represent the values more precisely, which is what I finished up doing, but I certainly wasn't sure at this stage. And I must admit, I hadn't given any thought to hatching the leaves, how I was going to do that, because once I finished the rows, I realized, well, I have to do the leaves as well. But their value is clearly much darker, even the few patches which are in a bit of light are much darker than the rose. So I need to really do a lot of hatching and particularly a lot with a 0.1 half dried out pen to get the value. I could have switched to a heavier pen to do the leaves, but I thought that would end up creating some sort of heavy handed emphasis of the leaves 
which I wouldn't want. So I'm hatching and I'm cross hatching in some leaves. I'm, I'm trying to see now not the shape of the shapes defined by the, the tops of the petals, but now I'm trying to see the form, the roundedness of the form where it rolls towards us, away from us, or curls, curves to each side and trying to do some marks that capture some of that sense. The challenge is that ink lines, even light ones done with a half dried out pen, still do make a fairly heavy impression compared to the delicacy of a rose petal. And particularly a rose that is a relatively light coloured rose as this pink. I resisted the urge to print off a black and white version of this, but that would have been an interesting way just to make even easier to understand the values of this rose in this light. To remove the colour complication so that we were just seeing the lights and darks. It probably would have still been a challenge to have copied them with my hatching, but they don't have to be worked out if we do that. It's a great way of checking what we're thinking if we're trying to pay attention to developing our appreciation of values skills. Think it through and then print out a black and white copy and see if the darkest values we thought were going to be darkest are actually darkest. So I'm, I'm really just going all over back and forth on the photo. There was a huge amount of observation for this because I couldn't take anything for granted. There was nothing here that was familiar. The general shape of a rose, the way a rose is put together, yes, I'm, I'm a gardener, so I understand roses, but none of that information was useful for this rose. And so it was actually very intense. And despite which, I left out a petal. So it certainly can happen. The perennial hatching question, which direction do I hatch in? The direction you think is going to work best, look best in your drawing is the answer. And for me, almost all the time, that means I try and follow the underlying form, but then we can come at that with different direction strokes anyway. So we still need to decide whether these vertical, these hatching lines here are going to be vertical or could I have come across from around the back horizontally? Would that have been more effective? Would that have created a more realistic feel to the rose? I suppose I could draw this a second time and do that. Actually, no, I took a photo. I took a photo of this before the hatching began. So I could just print off a copy of that and, and do the hatching in a different direction. It is a good way to practice our hatching, to in fact print off a copy of a line drawing we've done, print it out several times and experiment with the hatching. And we know that we, we don't have a drawing to spoil or waste by being too adventurous. So it's the perfect way to experiment with hatching without pressure, is to not have to do the drawing each time. So you're actually watching this whole video at three times my real drawing speed. So if there's any of it you want to see slower or closer to real time or on real time, go to the cog icon and you can adjust the video speed down to a quarter speed. Or if it's not fast enough for you, if you can't get to the end fast enough, you can speed it up as well. But whatever works, the availability is there. And so now just moving on to these other these other leaves. Now for the really dark colors, there is quite a bit of hatching back and forth, back and forth. I'm trying to hatch in a certain direction with the leaves firstly to reflect the underlying shape of the leaf and trying to make that shape consistent then with catching the light from the light source without getting too caught up in it. But I feel like the dark colour is 
the, the main way to really immediately separate these, these leaves from the petals in a visual sense so that the brain isn't somehow trying to connect them in, in a confusing way. But the instant we realise it's a rose, we know that those are leaves around it. So going quite dark with these and doing a lot of hatching. When I, I don't want to have too much of an obvious crisscross in my hatching, I don't want to do the 45 degree thing. I find that keeping the, but I still want a dark value. I find that keeping the lines uh, not, not parallel, but slightly angled, only very slightly angled between each series of hatchings is a good way to be able to hatch over the top, over the top, create the even uh, value doing it that way. But still not getting a real, a real kind of, in some ways, artificial on the diagonal crisscross. Keeping the lines generally in the same direction, generally vertical, but by switching the layers just slightly, it greatly increases the, the value without hugely changing the feel of the direction of the lines or creating a very flat shape or pattern across the hatching which I think is always the danger with the 45 degree cross hatching. It just ends up looking like it's created a, a flat pattern, which doesn't often go with the underlying form of the object. But the last few lines here, what do you think? Do you think it's better with the hatching or did I have a more delicate, more in some ways, substantial feel, more real feel, just as a line drawing. Really interested to hear in the comment. I, I'm really not sure myself. I really haven't decided which way I should have gone. But it's like this for now. And of course, this photo you'll find on my channel community page. So you can have a go as well, drawing this rose if you want. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, a rose. Is this something you've ever drawn before? Are you up to the challenge of drawing a rose? That requires an awful lot of attention. So it looks like a credible rose. Why not give it a go? But as you know, whatever you end up giving a go and however it goes, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.